Thank you for joining me and welcome to the open day in the physics faculty at the Weizmann Institute. My name is Nirit Udovic and I'm a researcher here. I study extremely fast phenomena in nature and these are phenomena that evolved during 10 to the minus 18th of a second. So in my group, we try to record some of the fastest movie that nature provides us. In my second hat, I'm also the head of the physics board of study. Let me start with the personal uh, point of view. I grew up here at the Weizmann Institute. Here I did both my master and PhD. And I still remember this period as one of the most wonderful periods in my life. This is the time when I really turn from a student that knows how to solve exercises and exams into a true researcher that know how to ask questions, be curious, and even try to answer that. So I hope that in a few weeks from now, you'll be able to visit our beautiful campus, to walk in the gardens, to sit here in the grass just in front of the physics uh, faculty. But if you'll enter the doors of the physics faculty, of the physics building, I think you'll be able to feel the unique atmosphere that we have inside. Here at Weizmann, there are no undergraduate studies. And therefore, I think there is almost no hierarchy between the professors and the student. I work with my students on an almost equal level. The groups are small and we sit together with stimulating discussions, trying to address some of the most challenging questions in physics. Now to our master program, we select really the top students from all universities in Israel and institutes all over the world. And the selection is based on grades, recommendation letters, but also a personal interview because we want to know you, we want to know what kind of a researcher you'll become in the future. And since we believe that you should dedicate all your time to courses and research, then we provide full fellowship for all students with no exceptions. Our academic year is really composed of two main stages. In the first year, you dedicate all your time to courses. And only then, once you gain the basic knowledge and the tools that will later on serve you in your research, you become a real researcher. So here is a short description of the academic year. The first semester is composed of core courses and here you'll study quantum mechanics one, quantum mechanics two, and statistical physics. By the end of the first semester, you will take an experimental project. You will assign to two experimental labs, participate in an experiment. I think there you will find out that true experimental research is very, very different compared to what you were familiar with in your undergraduate studies. So, and who knows, perhaps you'll take part in some exciting discovery or breakthrough experiment. Now, at the beginning of the second semester, you will have a vague idea of what would be your future research direction. So here, we ask you to take introductory courses. And these are courses that will introduce you to your future field of research. By the end of the second semester, we ask you to choose an advisor and your future research group. And here you become a researcher. So the entire second year is almost fully dedicated to research. You can also take advanced courses that will deepen your knowledge. And if your professor recommended then towards the end of the second year, you can switch into direct PhD and continue directly to PhD. If not, then by the end of the second year, you will take your master exam and eventually receive the master degree. Individual experience. And I can tell you that I remember when I was a master's student here, my most vivid memory was me together with other students sitting on the same grass that I've just shown in the picture and really arguing, solving exercises together throwing into the airs all kind of uh, speculation, stimulating idea. And that was a major part of study, the major part of our ability to understand new physics. And therefore this year we have, uh, last year we have initiated a new uh, program, 
where we divide you into small groups and each week you will get a group exercise that you will have to solve together and submit together. And you do it not only by yourself, but you each group is assigned to a tutor. The tutor is a second year master's student or PhD student that help you go, go through this exercise. Um, another program that we have initiated several years ago is the personal mentoring. We don't want you to go through this year just by yourself. And we think that the experience of senior student is extremely crucial for the success. And therefore each one of you will be assigned to a personal tutor who can be senior master's student or a PhD student. And you can approach this uh, mentor with any question you have. He can help you uh, solve the home exercise, go through some questions in the lecture that were not well understood, or even give you some practical advices on how to choose a research group and how to communicate with the different professors in the faculty. Um, and let me tell you that during the past semester, during the lockdown, those two programs were extremely valuable to our students because they had the chance to not only participate Zoom lectures, but to actually personally interact uh, with their mentors. Here is a short description of the distribution of uh, students in our faculty. We have more than 100 master students and slightly less PhD students, of course, they vary every year and about 18 postdocs. And there are two important aspects to those numbers. The first aspect is the large percentage of foreigner students. We have almost 30% foreigner students and these are students that come from leading uh, university from all around the world. And we really appreciate that because I think they stimulate highly international atmosphere uh, in our faculty. You hear all language around and uh, it creates a very, very special, I think, atmosphere. The second important aspect is the ratio, the ratio between the number of students and the number of PI. So, in principle, the average ratio is about four students per one piano, which means that our research groups are small and we make sure to keep them small. In fact, the PI cannot take over a certain number of students. And the, the, the main motivation for that is that we want to keep close supervision. We want each professor to be involved in a student research uh, and provide valuable, I think, supervision and, and guidance. Another important aspect of this ratio is that really there is no hierarchy here. It means that you can knock on your professor's door at each point during the day that you wish. I tend to communicate with my students over the weekend if they have any problem. And I really feel that we perform our research on almost an equal level. I have more experience, but sometimes the really great ideas, and I can tell from my own personal experience that the most uh, breakthrough directions in my group didn't come from me. They came from students who just had a crazy idea and we enable them to, to pursue those ideas. And there is nothing more satisfying than to see a, your own student really grow up and become a researcher by the end of his PhD. Now, let me give you some practical details. So first, I encourage you to register. There are no registration fee, so registration is free of charge. Also, there are no tuition free. We do not charge anything for the courses that we deliver here. And since we want you to focus on your research and do not have to work in between, then we provide fellowships for all, and these are the numbers. Master students receive about 6,000 shekels per month. And of course, your fellowship will increase as you progress in your academic path. The PhD student receives about 8,000 8, shekels. Now, um, there are no teaching requirements, so tutoring is not mandatory. But that provides you an opportunity to work, for example, at Davidson uh, Institute which is the education uh, branch of Weizmann and gain some extra salary. Many of our students do that. 
Um, and let me just mention that you can increase your salary by applying to competitive uh, fellowship that can increase your salary by about 20 to 40%. And finally, PhD students also receive travel allowance because we all believe that students should go abroad once it becomes possible, of course, uh, participate in international conferences, be involved in international collaboration, and it's a major and a crucial part of your academic career. And finally, you have, as I mentioned before, the option to take a direct track uh, to PhD in your second year. Now, the top students, which means the students that have the highest grade or recommendation letters upon uh, arrival, will receive a special acceptance prize of 15,000 uh, Israeli shekel upon joining. So indeed, uh, the past year was not trivial and I can assure you that we invested really huge effort trying to keep it as normal as possible. And the picture that you can see here just provide you with one example. We invited the students when it was still uh, legal to do that in, in uh, groups of 20 students, we invited them to the campus. We encouraged them to meet with us and but most importantly, to meet with each other. Uh, so over the past semester, we had many personal meetings. Uh, students arrived here for both the personal mentoring program and the group exercise program. They, went, they met with me and the other teaching committee uh, members. And we did try, and by the way, when everything here was locked and I was allowed to bring only a few students from my group, we gave special permission for all first year master students to come on a daily basis to the campus, to sit together in the library because we knew how crucial this is. So, and that, this decision just tells you what is the priority of the master students here in our faculty. We prefer to somehow a little bit slower research in the labs as long as we can enable those master, first year master students to arrive to the faculty on a daily basis. And with that, I would like to uh, transfer the microphone to Kfir who will describe the admission process. Thanks, Nirit. Uh, maybe we can go on using your slides if you, you take one step forward and then I'll discuss, discuss the whole flow. Uh, all the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, one back. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much to Nirit. And I would like to say some words about the admissions progress uh, process. How do you get accepted to, to come here for the master's program? So before going to the details, just to, to make it very clear, um, as joining master students, you are our most important asset in the Institute. When you join here in a few years from now, um, you are going to be the people who make up the Weizmann Institute and also many top notch institutions and you know, high tech industry, research companies worldwide. So you are the asset. Um, and we have this in mind in, in the admission process. The way it works is, is the follows. So to join us, you should have an undergraduate degree in physics, or if you come from say an engineering background or a mixed background, there are a number of core courses in physics that you should have. This is discussed in the um, Feinberg Graduate School uh, webpage. But if you're not sure, you can contact us to ask, am I missing something in my application? Is there something I need to strengthen? If you didn't have your degree yet, when you apply, this is understood. Some of you will have the diploma for the undergraduate degree only just before you join us, but you need to have it. You need to know that you're going to have it. Then there is a free online application that uh, is easy to find on the Feinberg Graduate School uh, web page again. We have a deadline, which is uh, March 31, the end of March. We encourage you to apply before the deadline. We already have dozens of applications that are pending, um, and we are, we are starting to, to deal with them. If you apply earlier, 
we can try to process the file earlier. Um, applying early certainly does not hurt your chances to, to get accepted. But again, the deadline is, is end of March and you can apply by then as well. Um, you are encouraged to collect recommendation letters <clears throat> from people either in academia that you met in your undergrad or also in research uh, uh, experience you had in industry. This can help us um, evaluate your chances of success here. So after we receive your full file, so the application file, um, we have uh, meetings and discussions by the board of studies to select um, the first, if you want people who pass through the first phase. Now there is um, some chance for some very um, um, exceptional cases to be accepted automatically, and then we can let you know. Others, more commonly, are passed on to admissions committees. Admission committees are, are basically interviews, and some of the files will be rejected already at this phase before the admission committee because some material is missing, or maybe this is uh, the, the grades, recommendation letters, and the overall quality of the file doesn't match the um, the sorts of level that we were trying to encourage here, or that is required to pass successfully the, the first years of the master's program. So then those who pass this first phase go to the admission committees, which are um, interviews. Um, the goal of these interviews is for us to get to know each and every one of you personally. We, we consider each of and every one of you again as an, as an essential asset when you're joining the Institute. We want to know you as as soon as possible in the admissions process. Don't be afraid of that. Uh, this um, admissions interview is friendly and it's an opportunity for you to let some of, uh, of your you know, excitement about physics shine outside of, of the file that we receive in, the, um, in, your, in your application. Also, I should comment that especially this year, uh, but this can happen, uh, has happened in the past as well, some of you have absolutely outstanding exceptional files with super high grades could be requested to come to the admissions uh, committee. Again, this is not aimed to, um, to turn you down or, or to, um, to push you to some corner there. This is, again, for us to get to know you, for you to get to know us, including some of the most outstanding um, um, achieving student in undergrad. Then after the admissions committee, we have more information on each and every one of you. Uh, we sit down, we consider this information together with your file, and we get um, we we come up with um, with final decisions, which could be acceptance, could be decline for those we cannot accept, or could be waiting list um, um, to let us evaluate the cases again with more time until um, a few weeks after the, the formal deadline. Nirit, anything else I should add? Um, no, I think this is more or less an important point. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so I think, if I'm not wrong, we are done with the master's program. Uh, ah, there was one, if Nirit, yeah, if you can stay on this page. So just to mention that uh, Nurit was, uh, was convening this whole event. Um, thanks to Nurit and, and to others before, we now have a Facebook page for the Weizmann Institute. This is a great place for you to sort of start to get to know us, tell your friends about it also, and, uh, and also make contact with us. So if you have more questions, that's another venue with, at which you can voice your, um, your questions and we will see this information. So here is, uh, the link is here on the, on the page and it's very easy to, to find it on the internet. And yeah, I want to add a few more uh, words about this. Yeah, we, we are going to, we publish there also research that uh, we do here at the Weizmann. So there's a lot of interesting uh, information there, both scientific and non-scientific. And we are also planning to do a series of uh, lectures that we will uh, broadcast uh, live in this page. So come and like the page and... Uh, Follow us. <laughs> but also, by the way, the, the lectures from um, from this open day, the scientific lectures, will eventually be posted um, yeah. through the Facebook site. Mm -hmm. 
it was asked before. Yes. I would like to add that uh, once we are done with the uh, admission process, students who are accepted to the Weizmann Institute, and if uh, the corona regulation will allow that, we will invite them in small groups to arrive to the campus. We think it's important for you to see where you will spend your next uh, at least two years, if not more. Uh, so you'll be able to physically meet with us, discuss with the students, visit the lab. We did it last year also during uh, the, the, the general lockdown.